Hello people, today we are going to learn about stockholder equity, par value stock, preferred stock, treasury stock and stock split. So whenever a company issues a par value stock, what we need to do, let's see an example to understand. What we need to record is the cash received, the number of share issued multiplied by the par value per share in the common stock account. The remainder is assigned to contributed capital in excess of par. So the, here is an example. Prepare the general, journal entry to record an issuance of $10,000 shares of $2 par value stock for $25 per share which occurred on September 1, 2013. The general entry to record the issuance of 10,000 shares of dollar to par value stock for $25 per share on September 1 should include a credit to common stock for the par value of the shares issued. So since, uh, let's see here, $25, 000, $25 per share and issuance is 10,000. So $25 multiplied by 10,000 gives us $250,000 in cash. So when when the company issued ten thousand dollar share, it received twenty two fifty thousand in cash, which is on the debit side, uh, because the share per share value was twenty five dollar, but the par value is dollar two per share. So what we need to write in the common stock par value multiplied by number of shares. So since par value is two dollars, we will multiply this two dollar with the number of shares issued is ten uh, two uh, dollar two in multiplied by ten thousand which will give you twenty thousand which is common stock on the credit account on the credit side of the account then we have to deduct this two fifty thousand minus the common stock account which will give us two thirty thousand this is the contributed capital in access of par this is the account which is say which is called contributed capital in excess of par and how we will calculate this value we will deduct the total cash received minus the common stock common stock is calculated at par value and this uh, cash is calculated based on the um, selling price of the share per share so we have to deduct this cash value minus uh, common stock we will get the contributed capital in excess of par Uh, let's learn about preferred stock. Uh, let's see an example to understand. Common stock at dollar fifty par value, four thousand share authorized, issued and outstanding. So, uh, for, uh, a common stock at the par value of fifty dollars, and four thousand shares are authorized and issued. So, the value of common stock will be par value multiplied by number of shares. So 4, 5 is 20 which gives us $200,000. Preferred stock is issued at $100 par value and 1000 shares are issued. So how we will calculate the value? Uh, $1000 is the number of shares and par value is 100. So preferred stock value will be 1000 multiplied by 100 will give us 100,000. So total contributed capital is 300,000. What is this 9%? We will see in the next uh, slide. During 2002, the director declared the cash dividend of 5000. In year 2003, the director declared cash division, dividend of 42000. What is the slide? I think I forgot to put the slide of uh, that one. So uh, here is the slide. Uh, if preferred stock is non-cumulative, uh, here we read that the preferred stock was issued at 9%. So now we will try to understand what is this 9%. There are two things, one is called non-cumulative and one is called cumulative stock. In case of non-cumulative, uh, the percentage which is given for the uh, preferred stock means that in case of issuance of dividend, 
the 9% of the preferred stock value uh, first 9% of the preferred stock value will be given to the people who have preferred stock so total preferred stock value is 100,000 9% of 100,000 is 9,000 so uh, it says that in 2002 um, directors declare cash or dividend of 5,000 so since 5,000 is less than 9,000 so this entire thing will go to the preferred stockholders so let's see here in case of non cumulative what happens if 5,000 dividend is declared this whole thing goes to preferred stockholders in 2003 they are saying that the dividend was declared was 42,000 of cash which is more than 9,000 so first 9,000 will go to the preferred stockholder how much is 42,000 minus 9,000 it is 33,000 so the remaining uh, of the 42,000 after giving to the preferred stockholder which is 9,000 the remaining is 33,000 and this remainder is given to common stockholder this is in case of non-cumulative in case of cumulative what happens in 2002 we know that 5000 was given out as the dividend and this entire thing will be given to preferred stockholder in 2003 the dividend was 42000 so how it will be divided so in case of cumulative we first have to uh, give the uh, areas of the dividend from the past year so area is 9000 minus 5000 4000 so first 4000 from the past year should be given to the preferred stockholder and then again the current year dividend is again 9% which is 9000 so this 9000 plus 4000 should be given to the preferred stockholder in case of cumulative in 2003 so total 13000 will be given in case of cumulative to preferred stockholder because 4000 is areas of dividend from the past year and the remaining of the 30 out of 42,000 uh, we will deduct uh, 13,000 from 42,000 and the remaining will be 29,000 which will be given to common stockholders so guys I hope you got some idea on the preferred stock cumulative and non cumulative let's learn about treasury stock treasury stock does not have any voting rights or dividend rights it's a contra equity account Treasury shares are issued uh, shares that have been reacquired by the corporation. When the stock is reacquired, the corporation records the treasury stock at cost. So let's see an example to understand more. On May 1, 2003, East Corp reacquired 3,000 shares of its common stock at $55 per share. So general entry on May 1st will look like this it reacquired that means it got back the treasury share stock at dollar 55 that means how much treasury stock you, you got 55 dollar multiplied by 3000 dollars will give us 165000 so, uh, so 165000 and the cash given out will be same 165000 55 dollar multiplied by number of shares will give you 165000 so this much amount of cash is given out by, for the uh, treasury shares now what happens in december 3 2003 east cup reissued 1000 share in this case it uh, it got back uh, the shares one second sorry yeah here it reacquired the share and here it reissued so in case of reissued what happens let's see it reissued 1000 shares at the stock price of 75000 so how much cash in case of issue what how much cash they will receive it's 75000 per share multiplied by 1000 share so 75000 cash is received so in the general entry will look like cash on the debit side 75000 and then how much treasury stock is received treasury stock is entered at the cost which was the uh, 55 dollar here so 55 dollar multiplied by 1000 treasury stock will be 55,000 value will be 55,000 and contributed capital in excess of par is 75,000 minus 55,000 is 20,000 dollars so this is the contributed capital in excess of par
uh, what is stock split so companies use stock splits to reduce market price outstanding shares increase but par value is decreased proportionately let's see an example to understand stock split assume that a corporation had 5000 shares of dollar 1 par value common stock outstanding before a 2 for 1 uh, stock split so um, common stock sh uh, before split there were 5000 shares and it says that it it is uh, going to split 2 for 1 so 2 for 1 means every one stock will be split into two so 5000 will become 10000 so total common share is now 10000 uh, previously the par value was one dollar one per share so since it is split into now the value of the share is decreased to 50 cents per share but total par value remains the same so whenever the number of shares increases the per value per share decreases and the, but the total value uh, par value remains the same this is the concept of stock split so guys i hope you got some idea on stockholder equity so subscribe to my channel or come back to my channel for more videos on accounting and other things thank you for watching